Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Thank you very much for being here. My name is Laurent Haug. I will be the host uh, of this uh, exceptional event. We are here to celebrate a um, proposal that was made 20 years ago by Tim Berners-Lee and which is, this paper is considered to be the starting point of the history of the World Wide Web. Good afternoon, everybody. Bonjour tout le monde uh, qui est connecté. First of all, I'd like to wish you a very warm welcome, not only because it's warm because of the sun, but really a very warm welcome to CERN. Uh, and I also wish you a lively and stimulating afternoon of discussion about the past, the present, and the future of the World Wide Web. Now, when I first learned that Tim Barnesley wished to celebrate the 20th anniversary of, uh, of uh, his invention, invention here at CERN, I was, of course, delighted. As you all know, Tim was working here when he wrote this paper and you just got the quote of the vague but exciting, which was written as a friend on top of his proposal. Uh, for an information management system, and thereby, this I would say was signing the web into existence. Now, I can tell you, CERN is very proud of the to be the home of the web. Heterogeneous computers and heterogeneous networks all over the world, a very, very hard problem, was solved. He is the second user of the web, or co conspirator of Tim. Please welcome Robert Caillot. Yeah. <clears throat> Great indeed to see you all here, and a uh, uh, very moving occasion actually to, to remember this. Uh, 20 years ago, I, I mean, any youngster who is 20 today has never known a time without the web. This is just unbelievable. I mean, to me, it's just like yesterday, you know. People spend a lot of time. FTP was very popular. People have people on the phone say, you can get it with FTP, you have to log on to alf.sen.ch and then you have to change directory to foo slash bar and then you have to get a file called, file called baz. So the URL was then, so the, the, the web software, if you typed in FTP colon slash slash alf.sen.ch slash foo.bar.baz, it would just, you could put that into one, all that, in, those instructions into one so line. from a web browser, we could browse all the years so of the web then, So the web automa then automatically, by dint mm -hmm. of a little bit of software adapt adaptation, every web server, every web browser could access all the, so that everything that which was on, already on FTP was deemed to be part of the web. Oh, I think CERN's an excellent place for it. To, maybe perhaps could have been the only place where it could have been. CERN is a way a uh, microcosm of the rest of the world because it has lots and lots of people coming from all over the place. Uh, and you know, some people, some places people come from all over the world but they're very organized and they have, they're told what computers to use and which programs to use. So and they come from all over and well in those days at any rate they were, they brought all kinds of different computer. They had all kinds of different documentation systems and, f and formats for their documents. So there was this huge heterogeneity for one, so there was a real need to do the integration of the system. Uh, also, of course, physicists are early adopters. They had workstations, far, uh, nice machines on their desks when most people across the world didn't yet. So it was, if you like, an advanced version of the, of the world. And also they were networked because the high energy physics community is so global, already they were networked. So this was, if you like, if, you, if the World Wide Web was a mold, this was a great petri dish to get it growing in, just the right combination of, of nutrients. The, the fact that CERN put the web into the public domain, the fact that they said when you use this technology you won't have to pay us royalties was absolutely critical. Of one technology which did do that was the gopher. It was going up a very web-like system and it was taking off and then the University of Minnesota, which owned it, said we might possibly charge fees for it. They might have to charge us royalties. Everybody dropped it. And then the World Wide Web was doing it and went on. But when that happened, people came to me 
urgently and said, look, you really have to, uh, you have to tell us what the, what the deal is with the World Wide Web. What, what about the royalties? I said, well, I have asked CERN to release it. Uh, I asked them a long time ago, but we haven't got anything out of them. And uh, Robert Kayo spent a long time you know, badgering the directorate, and eventually he got the signed, stamped CERN official document saying we will not be charging royalties. That was an essential key point, and otherwise the web would not have taken off. It would have splintered into many, many proprietary incompatible webs. This thing was just, I think, 10 years ahead of anything else that was on the market at that time. And that was one of the reasons why it was so difficult to get the web, in, to demonstrate it even to somebody else, because you had uh, to take the whole machine with you. The, the, this the, this the next, thing, I should say, all this pretty much, this was really, really easy. All the work had been done for me. So there's a program that you can run, which isn't up here. Is, is it always that? No, no it's not here. I think called the Interface Builder, which you can... No, the Interface Builder. Um, um, it's, in, it's in the development kit. And of course it's so here. you can just say, I want a new project, I'm going to talk, call it World Wide Web, capital, capital, capital. And, it, and, you, and then you can drag in the menus. So that link menu, I just dragged things in, new menu item, new item, new I item. Create a new application. Hmm? Look at that. So I'm creating a new application. There you go. I'm going to take, take a text field here. Uh, this one, this is the big text. Okay, I'm going to take a text field. And already inside that and text field. And make a big thing. The and the now I can... Oh, sorry, no, Tim, go, go ahead. Go. Um, now I can go and uh, run this application. There was a test mode. I know we called it with command R, run. Yes. So now I'm running the application in test mode. Well, disclaimer, I worked for Next after I worked for CERN. So I did these kind of demos a lot of times. <laughs> Well, well, anyway, what, what Jean-Francois Groff is trying to say is that building the software was almost a play on, on this uh, system. Mm. And then once it was ready, we had to take it out to the world where there were only text systems and so Windows machines mm. and whatever. And it was very, very hard to go away from this and put it somewhere and else. You say, please welcome back Tim Berners-Lee.